Friends, I got my hands on the UltraCraft RS Turbo Printer. It's time to show you how it works. So let's get cracking. Friends, this is the RS Turbo Resin Printer. As you can see, I've got it printing. Right here is the curing station. Please remember safety equipment like a respirator and of course gloves anytime you're working with a resin 3D printer. Please also make sure your area has plenty of ventilation. I've added this range hood assist in my garage area. All right, so now you've seen what it looks like when it's running. Let me show you how easy it is to get to this step. Now, friends, if you just bought a printer, I wanna recommend their website and I want you to go to support and find the software, the Blue Print Studio. Even before your printer arrives, downloading this is super slick because of all of the information that's included within it, simply pick your your OS, download and install. I did also add Blueprint Go so that I could use it on my phone. Same thing. Pick the one that fits the OS your phone uses. All right, so I have moved to Blueprint Studio. We've got a slicer, dashboard, the files we've done, the jobs we are doing, and the devices. First in the list is the RS Turbo. As you can see, I also have the wash and the cure. They are both offline. Of course, this one is powered on and it is printing right now. You can tell it is printing what it calls the lizard plate. Hard to see from that image what it is, but I'll show you that print in just a little bit. Before I show you how to use the tools, I want to show you the help center. The first thing you see is the user guide. You can download this to help you work with Blueprint Studio. I'm going to show you how to quickly get started in a moment. Of course, then you can move to your printer. I am using the RS Turbo. I'm going to just tell you this setup is identical. These videos do launch in your web browser and they'll have your printer unpacked and ready to roll in just a few minutes. Same thing for the wash and cure, the different kinds of resin, and then there are solutions for some things you might run into. Of course, the last one I want to highlight is the frequently asked questions. Of course, simply hit the button and boom, check out to see if that fits what you might be struggling with. So far, I have had no issues with my printer. It's been an absolute blast. You can see these are the ones I've worked with lately. If we hit the slice library, you can see all of the projects I've worked with. Let's quickly jump into the slicer and let me show you how to get a project ready. So the first thing I'm gonna do is click new project. Of course, I'm using the RS Turbo. I do not have a pulsing release module installed. It's going to be a general purpose project. And then find the resin that you're using. I am using PAP10. Scroll down and pick your layer thickness, either more fine or standard. I'm going to do standard for my project. And hit apply. At this point, we can drag and drop to add a part. I have got a fun little gator. I call it the HL Gator. Let's hit open and check it out. So this gator was created by one of my sixth graders. As you can see underneath, it has some branding and we can get it ready to print by simply clicking one click slice. I'm gonna call it HL Gator and I'm gonna put Drake cause that was the student that helped make it back in the day. And I'll send it to the printer even though the printer is currently printing. Once I hit start, it says, what printer do you want to send it to? I'm going to send it to the RS Turbo, and I'm going to send via the cloud. It instantly rotates, finds the correct angle, adds the supports, and we're done. Notice we do have to wait a moment for the slicing to occur, and then bam, it was sent. Note, you do have to start the machine out here at the printer. All right, everybody, so the print is finished. Before I open this up, we're getting on the gloves. And of course, the mask, the rest of this audio is going to be dubbed. All right, so this is how you unlatch it. I lean it against this, and then we simply scrape the resin off. Unfortunately, I put myself in the way, so you really can't see that. With it scraped back in, you can now use the little tray that clips right on the front. And boom, pop your part into that storage tray so you can take it over for washing. I wipe off the excess resin with paper towels and of course make sure you store all those paper towels where you can dispose of them properly. As we move it over to the wash that is connected to the internet just so you know. Here we've got it open and I'm adding 91% alcohol. I got this from CBS. I have also got some from Walmart. Of course now I can drop it inside the bin and of course seal it back up and start the wash 
process. Of course, gloved up, masked up, and there's nothing wrong with wearing eye protection as well because you don't want any of these materials on your skin or in your eyes. The dots show three different menus. We are just going to go straight. The wash menu, of course, choose our resin. I am using the PAM10 general purpose. Once again, click it, and it's going to be a four-minute shake process, which, of course, I sped up with video editing. Once that completes, of course, you can unclasp it and then grab the part. I'm going to set it on that tray and take it over for curing. Of course, I will mention once again, make sure you've got all your protective equipment while you're working with this. Once that's complete, you can snap it back together like this, and then you swap the one that is full with the one that is empty. And on the end, there is a drain so that you can easily swap out your cleaning solution and get ready for your next print. Of course, at the curing station, simply open it up. I'm gonna still use the pliers to set it inside there. Once you've got it inside, we can close the door. And we're going to simply press the button on cure and let it go for 30 minutes. All right, so let's run through what we printed. Obviously, these are built for creating figurines. So, of course, I had to prove that a flexi-rexy was possible. Another part I absolutely loved was how tiny I could make flexi. I have also got tiny turtles, once again created in Tinkercad, branded with HL Mod Tech, and they turned out fantastic. This is a star fidget. That's the FDM. <laughs> this is how tiny I was able to make it. Still functions using the RS Turbo. How cool is that? This is a part that comes with the printer. As you can see, it's got a round peg and a square peg. We can see how close they fit. These are all labeled 5, 5.03. As you can see, it goes in, but it's pretty snug. If we go to 5.03, that fit is pretty awesome. Switching to the square once again. Pretty snug, but it does go in. If we switch to the 4.03, that is much better. Another print I would like to share is my print in place car. Once again, front headlights, tail lights, and my favorite part is it has print in place wheels that actually move. And of course, the largest project I have printed so far, it is baby Deadpool. How cool is that? And of course, this is the lizard. This is one of my favorite things about this project. As you can see, he is now multicolor because we made holes the exact size of filament. And then also we have got Drake's Gator Keychain. Once again, branded with the HL Mod Tech channel. How fun is that? Friends, let's wrap up our day one use of the RS Turbo. Of course, I do want to mention I'm having an absolute blast. If you're wondering the difference between an RS and an RS Turbo, it is a 10.3 inch 8K amber screen. This achieves clearer, sharper results while enabling faster printing. It produces smoother models with no visible layer lines, and it ensures long-term print stability. I do want to highlight that there is an upgrade available for RS machines, so you can add the amber screen as well. Friends, of course, I do want to remind you I have not worked with resin in a long time. If there's something I missed or something you'd like to know about, please add a comment down below. I am always looking for the next topic that is interesting to my viewers. Of course, do make sure you keep an eye on the description of this video. Of course, there'll be links to Hay Gears there, and hopefully soon I'll be able to offer a discount code as well. I do want to quickly say thank you to everyone that supports me via YouTube memberships. Of course, there are three different levels and all support is appreciated. Also, a huge thank you to my supporters on Patreon. Love how that group is growing. Of course, you can learn more with the bit.ly up above or the link in the description. Finally, friends, I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget every time you hit that like button, share a video, add a comment down below, or hit subscribe. You're helping HL Mod Tech get just a little bigger, which absolutely makes my day. Friends, have a glorious day and keep tinkering.